Well, state lawmakers are scaling back legislation inspired by the Nassar scandal. A House committee adopted new versions of Senate passed bills today. The big change shortens the window during which sexual abuse victims could file criminal or civil lawsuits. The House is also dropping bills that would strip a government immunity defense in sexual misconduct lawsuits. Voting on these changes could happen this week. Well, we tried getting through the day today without any rain showers and failed. Dustin joins us now to tell us if that will continue into the night. Dustin. Now the clouds will linger for a while, but we're done with the rain at this point. I'd say we had some morning rainfall and a couple of little afternoon showers as well. Have a look outside where East Lansing sky came where it's still cloudy and gloomy, probably seeing some fog from time to time. Local radar did have a few showers coming and going here and there. Nothing strong, but there was a Good little soaking uh, part of Lansing earlier today. Now still have a lot of clouds around, but no more rain really expected. Temperatures a range because of that rainfall only up to the low 60s Lansing, still mid 70s in our southern county. So a big range to, uh, because of that rain still holding on to 70 in Hillsdale. For the rest of your evening, we'll hold on to the clouds. It'll slowly break apart later tonight and a bit of a range in temperatures, but basically a lot of 60s this evening and then down near 50 overnight. Clayton, from here, we're getting much sunnier and much warmer. We'll talk about that coming up. All right, Dustin, thank you. The officer killed in the line of duty in Maryland last night is being described as smart, energetic, and talented to rise through the ranks. Police in Baltimore say a 16-year-old boy is being charged with first-degree murder in the death of Officer Amy Caprio. Police say the 29-year-old officer was run over by the teen who was driving a stolen Jeep in a neighborhood where a burglary had just taken place. Three other teens have also been taken into custody, but police aren't saying if they'll be charged in her death. The first of three roundtables to discuss future school shootings got underway in Texas today. The governor is pledging to listen to advocates on all sides of the gun debate as well as victims of mass shootings. Wendy Wolfolk has more. What needs to be done? What are your suggestions? What are your ideas? On the same day the Texas governor's round tables begin. The problem is that innocent people are being shot. Strong words from 40 students in his state. In this full page ad in today's Houston Chronicle, they signed a letter saying, quote, We appreciate your thoughts and prayers, but without policy change, this crisis will not end. We are dying on your watch. What will you do about it? But in Santa Fe, any solution comes too late. The whole time I was just holding my friend's hand. Isabel Lamance and eight other students barricaded themselves in an art supply closet. He said, woohoo. He just like screamed it, kind of shouted it. And he came back into my classroom. And through the window, the gunman fired again. The school resource officers arrived in approximately four minutes and started engaging with the shooter. According to investigators, those officers cornered 17-year-old Demetrius Pagucci's in the art room. After 25 minutes of negotiations, the teenage suspect surrendered. While those heroes were engaging with that shooter, it allowed the other heroes that were arriving to sweep and continue to go through room by room, door to door. Despite the young shooter's alleged confession, investigators and this grieving community still seeking answers as to why. A flight that originated in Austin, Texas has crashed in Honduras. It was a private jet with six people aboard, though there was no immediate word of deaths or injuries. Video shows the Gulf Stream jet broken in half on top of what appears to be a highway ramp. Firefighters could be seen spraying the wreckage with foam. Honduras Emergency Management Commission says first responders are working to rescue the passengers. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says despite some uncertainty, the U.S. will keep preparing for a face-to-face -face meeting between President Trump and Kim Jong-un. Today, President Trump told reporters the meeting may be delayed. Pompeo says the White House and State Department will approach the June 12th Singapore summit, ready to talk about denuclearization of North Korea, but he's not saying how likely it is to actually happen. A memorial service to mark one year since the terror attack at an Ariana Grande concert was held in Manchester, England today. Hundreds of people attended the service to honor the 22 people killed. 
Candles were lit for each of the victims and thousands across the country paused for a moment of silence. The 22 year old attacker blew himself up as fans were leaving the concert at Manchester Arena. Ariana Grande tweeted her thoughts to fans today saying I love you with all of me and I'm sending you all of the light and warmth I have to offer on this challenging day. Police say 100 investigators are still working the case. Well, there is still much more news to tell you about here at 530, including the latest on Hawaii's Kilauea volcano. Residents worried the lava is getting a little too close for comfort to a nearby power plant. Stay with us. Sarah Swistak. Storm Shield weather with Dustin Bonk. This is Fox 47 News at 530. The situation in Hawaii may about to be getting a whole lot worse. The lava flowing from the Kilauea volcano is getting closer to a power plant. Miguel Almaguer is there with the latest. Even a safe distance away from this fissure, you can really feel its power. It's well over 100 degrees here on the ground, though the air temperature across this island is much cooler. <laughs> This fissure has been breaking out for several days, say geologists, and shows no signs of slowing down. A lot of people are freaking out. They're, uh, really, they're really afraid. This one is actually not far from a geothermal plant in the area. It's already crossed onto the property, but so far has not caused any serious damage. It's a concern, though, still. More than 40 structures have been destroyed here. 2,000 people remain evacuated. Officials say they're also worried about air quality, especially in the coming days as more sulfur dioxide burns off and that hot magma hits the cooler ocean water. Ooh, ah, can't see. Even if you don't have heart or lung problems, it could cause lung problems down the road. It's a concern all across this island, while in residential communities, this is what they're worried about today. Back to you. A two-year-old boy is shot to death, and it appears his four-year-old brother pulled the trigger. Ty Aponte shot inside this home outside Richmond, Virginia this morning. He later died at a hospital. Investigators are currently calling the shooting an accident, believing his older brother fired the weapon. The children's mother was home at the time. No other information is being released. One man suffered burns on his face and arms after a propane tank exploded in Ohio. Officials say a fire broke out around 11:15 this morning at the ABF freight in Parma, causing several of the tanks to explode. Crews were able to extinguish the fire before it spread to the building. He was taken to a local hospital. It's still unknown what caused the fire, although authorities believe it to be accidental. One person was killed after a small plane crashed this morning near the Chesapeake Regional Airport in Virginia. It happened just after 730. The single engine fixed wing plane crashed in a field less than half a mile from the end of a runway. It was just the pilot on board. The Federal Aviation Administration is on site to investigate what caused that crash. In tonight's tech news, Comcast wants to turn your shop into its stores, into an experience. The cable company is opening up dozens of retail stores where customers can try out gadgets and apps similar to that of an Apple store. The goal is to retain more customers by helping them to fully understand all their products have to offer. Customers will still be able to pay bills and swap out equipment at the new stores. Best Buy is trying to stay relevant in the retail industry by expanding its Geek Squad services. For $200 a year, subscribers can get unlimited phone, online, and in-store tech support for all of their devices. The service also includes virus protection and help setting up your home network. 